Audhu billahi min shaitan rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. All praise is due to Allah, the Master of the Universe and all the worlds, who granted mankind the mercy of true guidance through His Messenger, Prophet Muhammad, and His holy progeny. Peace be upon them. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. On the eighth of on the eighth of the month of Shawwal, year thirteen forty-four after Hijrah, the evil Wahhabi group headed by Abdul Aziz bin Saud occupied Mecca then headed towards Medina and after besieging the city and fighting with his, pe with his people and its defenders they occupied it and began demolishing the shrines of our great Imams peace be upon them in the Baghia cemetery which in there lies the shrines belonging to the blessed progeny of, the, of our great Prophet Muhammad Imam Hassan al-Mushtaba, Imam al-Sajjad, Imam al-Muhammad al-Baqir and Imam Jafar al-Sadiq peace be upon them all and with this crime they bruised and bloodied the heart of all the free and honorable people on the month of Shawwal, and particularly the, particularly the eighth day, the enemies directed a great insult on the high and holy stature of the Messenger of Allah, may Allah bless him and his poor family, but also to the Quran and Islam. Still, the effects and consequences of such offense remain to this day. This insult is the demolition of the shrines of the four of our infallible Imams, peace be upon them, in the Baqi Cemetery in the city of, the, of Medina. During these days, you see all the Muslims used to head towards Medina to be enlightened by the illumination of the great Imams, peace be upon them, and wallow with the dust of their graves. And so they prevented them from visiting and crying and reaching the holy graves till this day, <coughs> that even on the day of Eid al-Fitr, 1434, after Hijrah, the Wahhabi Baqi cemetery guards had the Baqi guarded and closed for the whole morning and noon till, till afternoon for no logical reasoning at all while hundreds of sorrowful Shia were restrained from visiting the graves of the holy Imams and all the holy figures on such a blessed day until it was opened in the afternoon after pressure from the people. In the month of Shawwal, um, every year and just like every year, the Shia recalled the sorrows of the demolishing of the holy shrines in Baqi and the people were and had been waiting for accomplishing a step forward on the road to reconstruction. But 8th of Shawwal has shown to be a day of new failure as efforts were sufficed in just organizing the traditional yearly ceremonial which practically doesn't do anything towards solving the actual problem. And that is the sick and miserable reality. Even though we are living in a time that everyone is demanding their freedom and basic human rights. So to make sure this year we do not organize events about the Baqi case that act as a public representation, we have to work towards organizing very large gatherings in which we announce and confirm our rejection towards what happened. The main thing we need to do is defend our religious rights. We should make human rights, legal rights and cultural conferences to start off with a work plan on rebuilding the holy shrines of the Baqi as this is a time of change and there is no escape for those who violated the regulations of the mind, justice and humanity. The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia the so-called nation have decayed and weakened and their false beliefs have been exposed and their kingdoms have emptied. The agony of the Prophet and his holy household, peace be upon them, is that the anniversaries of the demolishing of the holy Baqi shrines pass by without us pausing for that moment and, remem and remembering it with the responsibilities and duties that are pinned on the shoulders of every Muslim regarding this case. As the demolishing of these holy shrines is a crime by all standards, and it is a crime that bears the stamp of contradiction with itself firstly and with religi religious values secondly and with the status of civilization thirdly and with the reality of the Islamic nation and its history fourthly so if demolishing shrines was obligatory lawfully so why demolish some and leave some? and if the building is considered, considered heresy and religiously forbidden then why do we see the shrine of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him and his holy family is still constructed and hasn't been ordered to be demolished till this day. I don't think these evil people are using taqiyya dissimulation in this area because they deny taqiyya themselves and they say it doesn't exist. You, and just to make clear, I am addressing the Salafi Bakri Wahhabis. You spy and you pursue and you question and you punish anyone who organizes programs of celebration and who celebrates in the remembrance of the birth of the noble prophet, which does not contain any doings that are against the Islamic law on the other hand, you do not object on parties that are full of music, singing, dancing 
and appearances of various types and colors. So is this kind of double standard permissible? Is it permissible to insult the lover of Islam and satisfy their reckless disbeliever? So is it possible to think like such rational thinking or wise people of this world? Where is the common sense? Is it sleeping or narcotized under the influence of the fallacious defected satellite channels or the daily drugs? Or is your common sense in a long-term vacation? Or is it sentenced to death by force under the darkness of false cause? For as the Messenger of Allah, may Allah bless him and his pure family, has come to remove the barriers of your mind 1,400 years ago. So why did you lock your mind in a large chamber and beat yourself with the whips of cruel ignorance from the stray invitation that came from teachings far from instinct? History does not hide as it has witnessed in more than one incident and event that the enemies of Islam have spared no effort to obliterate the virtues of Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them, and erase anything that is related to them by link. But after they failed on that, they purposely aimed at demolishing the monuments of the holy Imam shrines, or explode them, or burn them, those monuments that millions revere. For they have demolished the shrines of Imam al-Hussein, peace be upon him, and the shrines of, Im of the Imams of the Baqiya, peace be upon them, several times, and they have burned the shrines of Imam al-Jawad and Imam al-Kazim, peace be upon him, peace be upon them, in Baghdad, and the house of Imam al-Sadiq, peace be upon him, and the shrine of Imam al-Hadi, and Imam Hassan al-Askari, peace be upon them, in Samara. And in addition to these ferocious crimes, they also bombed the dome of Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas and killed his, vis his visitors. What does this mean? They have declared a war on all graves and on all mosques and the domes on top of it. So they destroyed what they destroyed without any doubts of, of conscience or restraint from religion or respect for the dead or the alive, regardless of his religion and his beliefs. So they committed acts that the broad history cannot speak of and they are still committing these crimes till this day. Doesn't it crush and dishearten those who traveled from thousands of miles to see the domes demolished and the shrines wrecked? and the graves violated, and the sanctities belonging to the highly righteous get assaulted? What is happening from massacres and bloodshed and tragedies is distorting the image of Islam, is killing Muslims around the world, such as in Burma. And these are just effects, products of, your, of the observations and thoughts of odd bakeries and reading their books and publications that is built on dismissing people from Islam and upsetting and innovating and distrusting other Muslims. Yes, <coughs> this group has declared war on the Messenger of Allah, may Allah bless him and his pure family, with all arrogance and atrocity in the name of Islam. But what have we done about it? What have we as Shia and followers of Ahl al-Bayt done? With deep regret, this is the inherited complex in our souls. Otherwise, if we were not afraid, we would have not passed the crime of the demolition of the Baqi shrines and we would have not let it be just a memory which we cry and beat our chest but instead would have declared to liberate our shrines from the first day because most of our sanctities have been violated these are the greatest of sanctities that are sacred to the pure Imams peace be upon them the sanctity is not just the building itself but also targeting the building <coughs> is like targeting the sacredness the sacredness of the holy household of Muhammad may Allah bless him and his pure family this is the sanctity that was violated and is among our greatest sanctity, sanctities. Why didn't we declare a major project of liberating our shrines from the occupating occupation by Wahhabis? Why didn't we? If we had taken such a step at that time, I believe that the holy shrines would have returned and rebuilt without having a single drop of bloodshed. But what happened, what happened instead? When the Wahhabis took control of Medina, they demolished the domes that were in Yambu'a. And from them is the dome of the Baqi Imams in Medina. But they, they did not demolish the dome of the Prophet, peace be upon him and his pure family. And they gathered the people in Mecca and they took all the supplies of the prophetic stone and its jewels. Our vision is blurred, our mind is off because our heart is shaking of fear. That's why others exploit our fear and complex of weakness within us. And they dominate and conspire and take away our rights and trample on our dignity. <clears throat> if one of us was very brave, the highest our bravery reached when someone trampled on our sanctities and dignity was by issuing statements of denouncements and condemnations. This is not an exaggerated view. 
but a view of reality that we're living with. Otherwise, let someone explain to me a different view to this cowardice that we are in since that we are that we are in since the Wahhabi criminals treaded on our sanctities in the Baqi. Let someone tell me. They attempted to demolish the grave of the Messenger of Allah. May Allah bless him and his pure family. Only that they became afraid from their reign, from the exploding situation that will fall on them from the whole Islamic world. But the evil intentions, intentions still remain. That is, they are hiding it and waiting for a favorable opportunity to abolish the Messenger of Allah. May Allah bless him and his pure family. Yes, they did not destroy the dome of the great Messenger of Allah, yet only they desire strongly to do so. There were even rumors that they attacked the Prophet's dome with bullets and they stole Kuli a stone idol. God forbid. What we as Rafada need to focus on is to liberate ourselves from the complex of weakness and cowardice and self-defeatism. This is the prevailing thought in ourselves that we are small in front of others, weak in front of others, helpless in front of others. That's why we have to keep our aspirations limited without exceeding anything other than eating and drinking. And the others will stop putting their hand on us. If they abuse us from one side, we give our arm to them from the other side. This group that violates my sanctities, that, san that sanctity, is this logical? وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَنَّاكُمْ أُمَّةً وَسَطًا Allah says in the Holy Quran, verse 143 of Surah Al-Baqarah, And thus we have made you a middle nation, so that you will be witnesses for mankind, and the messenger will be a witness over you. What does he mean by middle nation? In a Friday lecture in Kuwait on the anniversary of the Baqir Shrine bombing, Sayyid Ahmad al-Shirazi, may Allah prolong his life, gave a speech in which he explained this verse into three groups of people. He said, what does Mr. Nation mean? What does Middle Nation mean? Unfortunately, in the past few years, the translation of Middle Wasatiyah is interpreted as gentleness, delicacy. This is wrong. Middle al wasatiyah means giving everything its right. It's knowing how to deal with the different groups of people. So the, the Sayyid carries on to say that people are split into three groups. One group of people are logical people. Whatever their opinion is, even if they disagreed with you on all your opinions, it's not a point. A logical person, you deal with him with logic and manners. A human that takes into account his humanity. You deal with him as a human, even if he disagreed with you on anything. It doesn't matter. So that's the first group. The second group of people are the people that hate you for yourself, that insult you for yourself. They have a personal problem with you. You as a person. In this case, you have the right to respond to him, to insult back at him. And you know, an insult for an insult. But for this group, it is better for a person not to insult, but to forgive, as long as it's just a personal issue. So, the third group of people is that which insults your religion. That which assaults your sanctities. That which says the Prophet's father is a disbeliever, a kafir. That group which says the Prophet's mom is a disbeliever. That group which says the Prophet's granddad is a disbeliever. That group which says Imam Ali's father is a disbeliever, a kafir. That which violates your sanctities, that which insults your sanctities, that group which if you spoke about the oppression of the woman of the world, the Lady Zahra, peace be upon him, they insult you. This is a group with no value, it's worthless. You shouldn't just insult this group. You shouldn't just insult this group, but increase your insults on them. As the Sahih correct narration says, it is narrated in the book in Al-Kafi volume 2, <coughs> chapter 159, page 375, hadith number 4, by the great scholar al kulaini The hadith says, Imam Sadiq, peace be upon him, said, the Messenger of Allah, may Allah bless him and his pure family, said, when you will find people of bid'ah, ah, innovation, and doubt or suspicion after me, do bara'ah, ah, association. Uh, sorry, bara'ah ah means dissociation. Do bara'ah ah from them, and increase in your insults to them, and oppose and bring evidence against them. So they may not become greedy in bringing fasad, corruption, to Islam. You must warn people against them and do not learn their innovation. Allah will write for you good deeds for this hasanat and will raise your darajat, your levels, in the next life. As I stated in the beginning, this is a sahih, uh, correct narration as it's enough evidence that al Majesty confirmed this hadith as a sahih hadith. So yes, you need to increase your insults on them. Curse the sanctities. Don't respect them even one bit. My brothers, there isn't anyone greater than the parents of the Prophet. 
That is the Prophet's descent. <coughs> His lineage, lineage, the Prophet's honor, insulting the honor of the Prophet has no answer. They curse Abu Talib, Abu Talib, peace be upon him. And you stay quiet. You say, no, no, don't curse the sanctities. They insult the Prophet's parents and you stay quiet on such a group. Does such a group even have any value so you can respect them? Are they more precious than Abdullah, the Prophet's father? All of, them, all of them together are not even worth one bit of Abdullah's fingers or even nails. How can you give such a group any value? The Sahih narration says, increase your insult on them. And you say, no, I want to deal with them in a human way. Are they even human? What unity does one hope to achieve through deception? And why does one seek to achieve unity with a corrupted, false religion like this? Let me bring you an example. Look at a wolf. A wolf. An animal which attacks children, eats human flesh, a very savage and ferocious animal. If a wolf came by, would you say to it, with, oh, with this wolf I will speak to him respectfully, logically. Would you take the wolf, take the wolf and say, listen my dear wolf, your actions are not good, that's not how things are done. What, what would you call such a person? Does he even have a common sense? Won't you be certain that this person has an empty head for dealing with the wolf in that manner? Viewers, this group of people, the Wahhabis, are worse millions of times than wolves. Before a wolf manages to reach and attack someone, what do you do? You hit it, you fight it, you try to keep it off. That's how you have to deal with them, with these Wahhabis. These guys are worse than wolves. In fact, a wolf is very respectable compared to them. These are monsters. Monsters that raise the hands on the Baqiyah and demolish the shrines of the holy infallible Imams. The vicegerents of Allah. These people are worse than savages. An explicit public insult to the Messenger of Allah, may Allah bless him and his pure family. He who insults the Prophet, does he have any dignity for you to be kind to? In fact, insulting them is something very, very little. The great Marja Sayyid Sadiq al-Shirazi, may Allah prolong his life, suggested that we call the day 8th of Shawwal by the name, the Universal Day of Baqi. We have to make it a worldly event. This crime committed is not a small crime. This is a violation to human rights. <clears throat> this is a violation to human rights. This case is not just related to Shia. Even though on the top level it is a Shia case. This is a human rights case. Violating the sanctities of people without them provoking you in the first place. The first plan to do is to defend your... Yeah, to, is to defend. Yes, our circumstances are difficult. Particularly for the people living in the Arab countries. But are our circumstances more difficult than the Prophet's? May Allah bless him and his pure family. The Prophet was alone. Indeed, he was alone with only a minority of people helping him. Did he ever run away from the scene? Never. They used to insult him, but he didn't respond back at them. But when they insulted his God, Allah the Almighty, he gathered strong forces and within a few years, in fact, less than 10 years, he removed the false idols, their God or what they consider being a God. You can talk against me as much as you want, but to insult my God, I will never stay quiet on that. Why can't we do that? I'm not, saying, I'm not saying be the Prophet, even though that's impossible. But at least follow him and what he did. That's the problem. This is the complex within us. And if we don't get rid of this complex within us, there is no way for us to progress, ever. Because the nation that as people suffer from the illness of self-weakness is a defeated nation. What is the problem? Why are we like this? It is the fear. It's self-defeatism that we suffer from. We, because of past residue in which we used to be exposed to a variety of churches, tortures and oppression from the unjust governments and its associates, starting from the government of Abu Bakr and Abu Qahafa, may Allah curse be on, on them, be on him. We, because of them, because of these past residues, fear and cowardice become part of ourselves. We think we are weak, while, we are, while the truth is we are strong from what we own. Believe me, because a coward person does not want to admit in front of himself that he is a coward and in front of his community, he, what does he do? He wraps his cowardice in some kind of blanket. And sometimes he use the excuse of taqiyya and sometimes Islamic community, which both have its own rules and times and we'll leave the explanation for this uh, for another time. Illusion is the thought that we will be fine if we don't move a muscle and stay committed to taqiyya. These people clearly want the situation to remain as it is because the current situation is what they benefit from and have interest in. 
they have an interest that's built on staying on this ill situation and they want to keep the religion as a machine in which they use for worldly matters as they know it is not from their worldly interest if a new Shiite world is formed via a new religious uprising in its intellect we are in need of a psychological treatment we unfortunately thumped ourselves from exposing and weakening falsehood and in contrast we failed the truth because the truth doesn't have sweetness but rather has sourness that's why others who are unlike us become encouraged of us and we become humiliated by them in Bahar al uh, Imam Ali peace be upon him says <coughs> he says if you hadn't let yourself down from announcing the bitterness of truth and if you, ha if you hadn't become weak in weakening falsehood others would have not found it easy to override you and others wouldn't have been able to overwhelm you away away you cannot keep away grievance if you are humiliated and you cannot attain the truth unless you are serious and patient Did, listen carefully to what the Imam said in the last part you cannot attain the truth unless you are serious and patient so we let fear escape with no return let us proceed with a new mindset that is filled with courage where is the Shia of Ali peace be upon him where are those people that Imam Hassan al-Askari peace be upon him says about them in the book Tafsir Imam al-Askari he says the Shia of Ali peace be upon him are the people who are indifferent in the way of Allah whether death falls upon them or they fall upon death so rise up all Shia around the world and defend your sanctities so that on the day of judgment your face will be glowing in front of the Ahl Bayt peace be upon them وَيَأْبَ اللَّهَ أَنْ يُتُمَّ نُورُهُ وَلَوْ كَرِهَ الْكَافِرُونَ Surah Tawbah verse 35 But Allah refuses except that His light must be perfected no matter how disbelievers may hate it So regardless of all that evil effort Ahl Bayt's religious marks and sanctified heritage only exhausts and widespreads and with Allah's will and grace this sorrow will, will be unveiled from the nation of his noble Prophet Muhammad May Allah bless him and his pure family Even after now, he will prepare those who will reconstruct the shrines of unity and goodness that is demolished from a number of places in our Islamic world I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to strengthen us and take this psychological illness from our minds and free us from all restraints we imposed on ourselves so that we can reclaim for our rights and open early doors for the Imam uh, Imam al-Mahdi Ajallah Ta'ala Farij al-Sharif uh, Peace be upon him's reappearance to keep our feet firm upon his guidance and even more importantly the bridge to paradise May Allah grant peace and blessings to the Prophet Muhammad and his holy progeny Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh